last time I was here, the unleash your faith, the importance of unleashing your faith. And this is going to be unleash your faith part two. Remember, it's a... Uh, We have to understand the power of the words you have. If you do not understand, there are several things you need to understand. But one of the things that are basic is to understand the power of your words. Believe me, some of you are in this state of your life because of all the stupidities you have said before. That they have accumulated and all of a sudden, well, there's fruits. Because you see, words are like seeds. Are you listening to me now? Words are like seeds, and seeds produce harvest. And a harvest is what an abundance of whatever that seed really is meant to produce. So Proverbs 18, 21 says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. The intention of God was, remember, I said that I think last week, words were not basically made at the beginning for communication. Words were based for creation. The first time we hear words is the word of God saying, let it be light, creation. All right? So there is a creativity in the words. We all come from God anyhow. I don't want to get into that because that's too deep now at the moment. There are too many, too many avenues here when I speak of this. But it's important that you realize that even God meant the words to be used in order for you to establish his word in your life. Because his word is what life. So these are his word. The Bible is the word of God. I, let's say it. The Bible is the word of God. Say it. Do you believe this? Okay, if you believe that, you, you got a great percentage already at your favor. But now, you have to understand that words establish well, those, what that word means, God the, the made the words, not only for communication also, but it basically has that creative power that still exists, that still exists. And then, of course, the enemy of our souls will definitely take advantage of it, making you say things that are not God things, because... As God wants to establish life in your life, but the devil wants to establish death in your life. You follow? So how do we do that? Through the words of your mouth. And sometimes I would say, you know, and sometimes we speak against ourselves. We curse ourselves. Whenever something goes wrong, Start declaring how stupid I am. I'm this, I'm that. How could this be? You know, un paso pa'lante y tres pa' atrás. You know, it's a constant thing of cursing yourself, declaring what you don't want it to happen. That's the thing here. You are declaring, confessing, professing some things that really you don't want them to happen, but something has triggered something for you to say it. And that accumulation of things will come to give fruit. So that's what we have to have in mind. How powerful are my words and how much am I inclined to understand that truth? It's a deep thing, but it changes your life. So... It's uh, to establish the word of God 
is knowing that but you said already that you believe that the Bible is the word of God. It's a constant realize, realization of what the word is. So it will grow in you. Remember now, the Bible in Colossians says that you are complete in Christ. The first time I read that, I said, wow, but you mean complete in Christ? I might still make faults, you know, I still this. But the Bible is not referring to you as the exterior. It's referring to you as the interior. The real you is not what you see. The real you is your spirit. You follow what I'm saying here? God made you like he is, and he's a spirit. So we have a spirit, a human spirit. That's the one that goes to hell or goes to heaven. The real, because the body stays behind. You know? How many see dead people? At least in the, in the movies you've seen it. <laughs> so, you seen something you don't want to be. <laughs> but everybody got to go through that. Your body will stay. You see, this is just... Um, and this is, uh, uh, yeah, like a, a space suit. That's right, a space suit. You don't belong to this planet. You belong up there. So God gave you this body. I went, I went to school. I'm not talking about ministry school, real regular school. They said that we were mammals because we're animals. With, with, uh, with uh, you know, intelligence. But I'm not an animal. I'm a son of the living God. So I never received that. And don't you receive that. But that's what they taught me. It doesn't matter. They taught you a thousand things that are wrong. You know when you know things that are wrong? When they clash with whatever God says. And then when things clash with whatever God says, you know what happened? You have a decision to make. Because it's going to happen, not what God says. It's going to happen whatever you decide for it to happen. Because you have free will to establish whatever you want. Are you following me? Are you, if somebody falling asleep, hit him in the ribs. <laughs> you follow? So, I, I, so I want you to understand what I'm trying to show you here. Is the power of your words and what it will produce. You must think of your words as seeds. And whenever you throw them, you are planting them or sowing them. And where that seed uh, will flourish, it will produce. So whatever God says, even though we may not understand it, is definitely the very best for us. When that word, that's the word I got, germinates. I was finding for couldn't get it. When that word germinates, it will be a production. Whether it's bad or good, because it is written. Life and death are in the power of the words. So what does that mean? You are responsible. That's what God is trying to tell you here. I'm going to show you what is true. I'm going to tell you what is, what is not true. But now you're responsible. Because in many instances, things that are not true, you don't want them. But you believe. Because you are uh, inclined. You have been brainwashed, whatever it is. You see, the news, for example, they will brainwash you with fear. You are constantly waiting for a new COVID to come. You tell them, so do we have the mask again? Do we have this? I heard there was another thing coming. There was the monkey thing a while ago. And I don't know, they're going to be, well, I don't know what's going to be. They are going to, the devil will continue doing things that even though are not yet established just for you to be afraid and your words will create, because they have power, will create that which yet has not yet come into the play. You will create them. I never heard that before. You never been in this church before, in my teachings before. 
But everything I'm teaching you is in the word. It's in the word. And in these last days, because we are in the last days, we have to know these things. Because there are going to come things against us that we're going to have to be very firm and speaking what God says and know what I'm feeling. The Bible doesn't say to stick firm to your feelings, but to stick firm to the word of God, to faith. Are you following me? Okay, that's in Hebrew. Give me Hebrew 10, 23, which is really the, I don't know what happened. I had more light here. I don't know what you do. Somebody stole it or what? <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> Praise God, man. No, but don't turn it off now. Don't go against me now because of what I said. You got to be careful with these people, man. You know what I'm saying? I still love them all. What can I do? The Bible calls you to love. But look, look, look at, look at Hebrews 10, 23. What does it say? Let us hold fast. Hmm? Let us be firm. Stick. Stick to it. Cling to it. Hold fast the profession. Remember, this is the profession of professing, of declaring, of confessing what you profess. Huh? Hold fast. Be immovable. Do not move at all from that position. God is checking you out to see if you really believe or you are cuento. <laughs> okay? Are you a joke or what? And sometimes we're a joke. We say we believe, but when the shoe is too tight, we loosen it. No, no, stick to it. Stick, hold fast. That's what God is saying. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Huh? Don't, don't shake loose from it without wavering. For he's faithful, that promise. That means he has promise. And if I stick to my guns, like he said, he will give me the production of what I'm waiting for. Do you believe that? Yes. Say amen. amen. Say I believe that. Amen. I will hold fast to my profession of faith. Give the Lord a hand. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Maintain, firmly maintain the declaration of your lips. Unleash your faith. Because sometimes we believe it, but we keep it. You know why we keep it? Because we have another problem that we got to get rid of. Some people are timid. Mm -hmm. You never make it. You are not making it now. Maybe you're being bullied all your life. They will continue bullying you. They will continue taking from you. And the devil will make a party out of you. Because you are timid. Timids cannot be true Christian because true Christian is also a soldier. And will declare, regardless of where he is, what he believes, when he believes it, and how he believes it. So, is God is going to be faithful? Don't worry, because many Christians that are timid, afraid, they, are, they waver. According to the wind, they believe it, but they don't stick to his guns. So people will tell you, yeah, I believe that. But when they say, yeah, I believe that, but when they give you a but, you know that they're wavering. Because but means there's a possibility of other things, perhaps. That's the but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but, you know. They usually say when they, they want to put somebody down. Oh, so-and-so is a very smart person. He's a nice guy. He's a beautiful person. Oh, that, he's a good Christian. But that will destroy you after the but. 
He will destroy you after that but, because the but means something totally different than what you said is coming. Are you learning that? How many buts are here? And I'm talking this type of but, not but. <laughs> Ay, Dios mío. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you following everything I'm saying here? Yes. Praise the Lord, man. Yes. Praise God. It is uh, basically, 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 you have to agree with God. Agreement. The agreement, biblically, is a very powerful thing. It's not just in the natural. You say, oh, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. But then you keep, no, no, no. In the agreement, you become part of whatever idea or thought that person is having. In the Bible, say, I agree with you. That's what Jesus said. When two or three get together and agree, I'm there in the midst. Because it's a very powerful, the agreement in the Bible, you become a part of it. So when you agree with God, man, I don't even have a word to explain what level of power you enter when you agree with God. What do you mean agree with God? Well, there's no buts, man. There's no buts. You are firmly believing what he says. Even though your mind is in a constant battle with you, because you, since you cannot reason it out, your mind is the first one. Listen, your main enemy is not the devil. It's your mind not renewed. Yeah. Your mind must be renewed or will become your, because it will be a hinder for everything that God says. Everything your God says, that God says, your mind will be the first, bah, the first uh, obstacle. That will appear. Are you following what I'm trying to tell you here? So, when you agree with God and you stick to your guns, it's a very powerful thing. Because you now are becoming one with the idea of that other person. And that other person happened to be the creator of the world, the universe. Man, I'm telling you how to go to the peak of the mountain. Have you been at the peak of the mountain, Pastor? No, but I'm going my way. Because whatever I teach you, I am preaching to myself. So don't look at me like, a, wow, he already arrived. Of course I haven't arrived, but I'm telling you, I'm much closer than most of you. <laughs> I'm much closer than most of you. And I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on. I listen to my preachings, to my teachings. By the way, I'm pretty good, you know. <laughs> now, I want to keep, keep humble. So, this is so important. Remember, agreeing is a powerful thing in the Bible, even agreeing with your brother or sister. But when you agree with God, the word is like God appears and something, I mean, something's going to happen. Something is going to happen. Let me, let me explain something. I didn't want to get into this. Talking about jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. If you read carefully, after you study Genesis, you will understand that God gave Adam the jurisdiction of this earth. La jurisdicción, jurisdiction of this, of this earth. That means that he had the authority in this jurisdiction. And the power that he gave him was the, the, the Eden, the, the Garden of Eden, for him to spread it out in all the earth. Now, he goofed up. He messed up. He disobeyed God and obeyed the devil. Correct? You remember that? Say yes or no. You ready? All right, he obeyed. The, the person or whatever you obey, you surrender your authority. 
your authority surrender when you obey whomever you are. When you were a little kid, you went to do something. But your father said, do this. Well, you had to surrender your authority and do what your father said. In your job, you surrender your own authority to the authority of your boss or your fire. So that's the way it is. Whomever you obey, you surrender the authority. Adam obeyed Satan. He surrendered the authority or the jurisdiction that God gave him on this earth. But Jesus came. Wow. I said Jesus came. Everybody say Jesus came. And everybody say he's coming again. But Jesus came and Jesus took back what he lost. And now, in this new covenant, God wants to live in, in, in humans, no more in temples. He doesn't live in, this is not the church. You are the church. Why you, you are the church? Because you, the church is where God lives. And God has, of course, if you receive Jesus. If you haven't received Jesus, you ain't nothing. Will you, before we finish, you can today. So, Jesus came to me, in me. And Jesus already have taken away from the enemy the jurisdiction that Adam lost. Therefore, as I said before, Jesus is God. Everybody know that? Jesus is God. And I receive Jesus. That means I receive God. And if I receive God, I receive him with all his attributes. Jesus, jurisdiction for this earth is within me. So what I mean to say is when you hold fast your confession, when you stick to your guns, you are bringing out something that you already have. Oh, my God, I know you understand. Am I, am I, uh, why don't you say something? You know what I mean? Leave me here. Say, yeah, grita, algo. Say something. Hallelujah. Yeah, don't leave me alone here, man. So. You're bringing out what you already have. It's not that you want to receive. It's that you have already received. And you want to manifest in the natural that which you have inside. Because you are completing him. Remember I said that before? Or you forgot what I said? Mm -hmm, yeah, good. <laughs> so... You are receiving this. Amen. Agreement. Look at Amos. 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 Uh, Amos. Amos. Three. I read before. Amos three three. Look. Look. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Can two walk together? That means that. Unless, except they be agree, unless they agree. If they don't agree, they cannot walk together. Correct? Amen. This is thinking, they are thinking here in biblical terms. But put it in a natural way, we can understand it. If I don't agree with you, I cannot walk with you. Because I want to go to the north, you want to go to the south. So it means now... That if I agree with God, he walks with me. But if I don't agree with God, he ain't there, baby. And you can drop your tongue asking him for whatever you want to ask him. And you say, but I don't know why God doesn't answer my prayer. Because you don't agree with him and he's not with you. Because he can only walk with you if you agree with him. Oh, my God. So you want to God to be present. 
in expect, remember, you can believe in Jesus and in God, basically, and receive him as a Lord and Savior. But then you're going to have to agree specifically. Specific, say specifically. Specifically in different areas of his thoughts. Because if there's an area that I have a but, and a but means there is a possibility of another road, another way, or another choice, then I'm not agreeing. I'm not, and if I don't agree, he cannot walk with me. That means that in that specific area, he will not project his power because he ain't there. Oh, God is everywhere. Talking about manifestation in a powerful manner. Say manifestation in a powerful manner. That's what you want. That's what you want, God. So that whatever God says, you got to, it's he, he's here. He's here. You already got it. Why you already got it? Because there's an inheritance. Do you realize your heirs? Is God your father? Yes. Are you a son or you're a child of the living God? You know that God, everything belongs to him? Do you realize that if you believe that he is your father and you believe in what I'm telling you, that in your spirit you have it all because Jesus is there and Jesus is God and Jesus entered. I'm going little by little. Sometimes say, but I'm not a kindergarten. No, you are K1. <laughs> Just listen to me. Be humble and receive my words. The more you think you're smart, the less you're going to receive me, and the more stupid you're going to get out of here. <laughs> All right? Because humility is the power of receiving. The humble person is able to receive because he goes down in humility. But when you think, you know, I'm too old for this. I'm already a, a senior in high school. <laughs> Listen to me, man. You dig? <clears throat> that was a change. What did the boss say? Inheritance. Inheritance. Okay, you are an heir of God. For some people, that their walk has been not a relationship but a, re a religion thing. It's very hard to receive these words, my words, because they have raised, and sometimes it's not, we think of Catholics, which they are extremely religious. Religion is a curse. Religion will put you away from reality with God because God is a relationship. And religious do not allow a relationship. Religious always have God far and you, uh, mea culpa, mea culpa. All the time repenting. And God wants you to repent and advance. And if you are repenting, you are in state one. You got to continue. You cannot be in stage one. You cannot be at the feet of the cross all the time. You're supposed to be at the feet of the cross to repent and then go to the empty tomb because that's where your victory is. In the empty tomb. But these words are not easy to receive if you come from a church or teachings that are more inclined to religions and rituals and ceremonials. And here is none of that. Here is simply develop a relationship with your father. And that's my job. And I'm a faith teacher. I'm a faith teacher. So, you're, you're, let me read Romans 8. Let me read Romans 8. Give me Romans 8. Are you following things? Are you following this? You anything? You know anything new? No, nothing. 
Okay, let me see. What did I tell you? Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8, 16. You got it? There you go. The Spirit. Spirit with, that's capital S. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Huh? That's God. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, small s. Talking about a human spirit. Hmm? The Spirit itself, which should be the Spirit himself. But that's how the translation is. Because it's not an it. But, so I'm just trying to be technical, but I've got to tell you. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are. We are what? Okay. There's witness in your heart that you are a child of God if you have done what the Bible says to do. Receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you haven't received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you don't have that conviction that you are a child of God. You may believe in Jesus. Here comes another bomb. Now, the hell, don't leave nobody when I say this. Hell is full of people that believe in Jesus. But they have never received him. And in this covenant, after he did and resurrected, the basic thing was for God to live in humans. So, of course, you have to believe in him before you receive him. Because you, how could you receive someone that you don't even know exists? So then, yes, first you believe him, but that is not the goal. The goal is to receive the one you believe in. So he'll make you part of the church. You follow? You agree? Say yes, even if you don't. Thank you very much. So, that's so important. So the spirit beareth witness that I'm a child of God because I've done what the Bible said. I have believed in, in, in John. Give me John chapter 1, please, verse 12. Go ahead. John 1, verse 12. The, the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. The gospel. The gospel. Well, I'm going to read it because... John 1.10. No, 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 no. Forget it, please. I said the gospel, not the letter of John. Huh? Okay, there it is. He's talking about Jesus. The whole chapter. It started saying in verse 1 in John, the gospel. At the beginning was the word referring to Jesus. And the word was God and Etc. Was the word was with God, and the word was God, etc. And then when it came to verse twelve, it says, "But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God." In other words, nobody is a child of God unless they don't do this that they are saying. No, but my my grandma told me. I don't care what your grandma told you. God knows more than your abuela. Okay? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So there are two things here. To believe in his name is basic. For you to jump into receiving him. But you have to receive him because that is the goal of this covenant. This is the covenant of this, of the, of this new, uh, new Testament. Jesus living in a human person. So, if we, are all children, we are all children of God. No, we are not. We become children of God because God only has one child, and his name is Jesus, his son. But Jesus, Jesus, his name is Jesus. Jesus can give you power to become, to become a child of God because there's going to be an adoption. And you then become part of the family. 
Huh? You follow what I'm saying? So if you haven't received Jesus, I don't care what your grandma have taught you. You are not a child of God till you do what the rest of us have done. What is it? We have believed what the Bible says and we have received Jesus. And receiving Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ gave me power to become a member of his body. And as I become a member of his body, it's because it's an adoption. I have been adopted into the divine family. So now, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Alberto. And you can add your name there if you have received Jesus in your heart. If you haven't received Jesus, don't say it because you ain't there. But you can be there if you do what God wants you to do. And I'm sure if you believe in Jesus... It's crazy not to receive him. Except you are full of religion. And religions may not allow you to do it. Because religion do not know really if you are saved or not. They believe you may be saved. May be saved. If you are constantly running to the priest for him to give you absolution. And then after he give you the absolution... You may have to go to purgatory and find the priest over there. <laughs> well, whatever. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes. Say, I'm a child of the living God. <laughs> go back to Romans 8. Now that I explain this, the Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Continue. And if children, and if, you see, not everybody, and if, there's some that may not be. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of who? Heirs of God. And join heir with Christ. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand, man. Woo! -hoo. Now, you follow what I'm trying to tell you? See, what, okay, what I mean if you're heirs, the only thing that I mean is that whatever belongs to dad belongs to you. Because you're an heir. You're an heir. If you belong, if you have, your, whatever your father has is yours. Whatever your father has is yours. Because you're an heir of him. And believe me, that mentality that, you have, that your father has to die for you to receive, that is not true. There are many people that the father gives the inheritance while they are alive. While they are alive. I was thinking, well, you know the prodigal son was given the inheritance. Well, he, the father was alive. He screwed up, but he was given the thing. And there are many people in life. I was thinking of uh, this guy uh, that have all these clinics. And he sold the clinics. I think it was 300 million, I don't know. And he gave each child like 50 million alive. Isn't that nice? So beautiful, of course. <laughs> it's beautiful to be in it. It's ugly if you are not in the group. Uh, so, so what I mean to say is that you give your inheritance while you're alive. You, it's already yours. It's already yours. Since it's already yours, you already have what God has because God is within you. And if God is within you, you have him. And if you have him... You have them. Follow? Amen. Praise the Lord. Everything God is saying is truth. All right? Truth comes from the truth. What Jesus said, I am what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, everything that comes from Jesus, from God, is the truth. Everything else is a lie. No, but it cannot be a lie because I'm having this, I'm having this problem. It's not a lie. No, 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 no. Because something exists doesn't mean it's true. Listen to me. The truth exists and the lie exists, but the lie is not the truth even though it exists. But because it exists, we call it that it's true. Oh, this is true. 
It happened to me. This is true. It's happening to me. No, no, no. It's happening to you, but it's a lie. Because the truth is what God says. The lies say you are sick, but God said he paid. Jesus paid for your sickness at the cross. Jesus says you are healed. So why you now comes the thing. Who, who, who will you choose to believe? Because that's what, at the end of the, everything I said, this is basis. Everything I says come to this, this point. Again, you and I making a decision to choose. God will speak. Your body will speak with pain, sickness. Your feelings, which is the great, one of the greatest power there is, will speak. Especially their feelings with situations, sentimental things that happened years ago. Experience you had that has marked you. So feelings will speak. Your body will speak. Circumstances around you will speak. And God will speak through the word. Because God said it, it will not happen. Because it's a, a, an equation that has to be him and you agreeing. I'm connecting that or not. You agreeing. If you agree, then it's because you have decided in your free will to choose know what your body says, even though it's saying it. It's existing, but it's a lie because the truth is what God says. You see, when the truth clashes with a lie, the truth wins. But that clash will never happen unless you activate it in choosing it. You got it? Get on your feet. And praise the Lord. Sing this song. You got it, you got it, you got it? You're going to choose life? You got to choose life? You're going to choose the word of God? Now, be careful. It's not what you want. It's what you believe. Nobody wants to be sick, but some people think that they, well, everybody gets sick. What can I do? So they accept. And then they speak what they accept. Sometimes your family have been poor all, your, all, all the time, all their life. You, you know, well, you know, my, I come from a poor family, and now I came from, you know what I mean, I can't. I came from Cuba on top of a shark. <laughs> All that joke. And this and that. And that, that's why you know, ain't got nothing. So you see, they bow to the circumstances. You got to bow only to the Word of God. And choose the Word of God because you agree with the Word of God. And then He will present Himself in a powerful manner. And then you will win. So, we have to change our mentality. It's what we believe that we are constantly saying and we're going to be firm, hold fast to that profession. Hold fast. Hold fast. And you're going to be tested, baby. I'm telling you. You're going to be tested. And uh -huh, tested. The devil is going to test you and show God, deceive you like he tried to do with Job. Oh, Job. You know? Let's see if he holds on. He says he believes you. Let's see now when I push him what he's going to do. You got to hold fast. You got to hold fast. Say, I hold fast. I hold fast my profession of faith. That's why I'm a winner. I'm a conqueror. I am on top of the mountain. Give the Lord a hand. 